dear colleagues and attendees, now it's our time for our second lecture. Uh, our next uh, treasure provider is uh, Professor Dr. Mohammed Ibrahim. Uh, he is not only the professor of anesthesia and ITU in um, Alexander University, but also he is the editor of the Egyptian Journal of Anesthesia. Today he is uh, giving us, um, talking in a very important topic, really, for four of us. It's the perioperative management of patient with cardiac implanted uh, electrical devices. Uh, it's very important for anesthetics and ITU, so uh, can we start with Dr. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Oda. Thank you very much for this uh, nice introduction. Uh, do, you, do you see my face? I, I, I couldn't find my, uh, my, my picture. Of, if you can see me, no problem. Okay, can you see me, all of you? Yes, we, I, I can see you, Dr. Mohammed. but- uh, Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, my talk today is about the perioperative management of patients with cardiac implantable electronic devices. It is a very uh, sophisticated, uh, Lecture as a very because the machine itself or the device itself are very sophisticated devices. Can I start Before the first start, poll, Dr. Mohammed, if you don't mind? Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll start first the first poll of uh, of the our talk. It will be on your screen now. This is a pre lecture poll. We, we need to see how much information you have about this subject, and there will be another one after the end of the lecture. So please, Dr. Saad. Yeah, it's done already now. Just, I'm okay. just waiting for them to respond. Okay. Let me speak to you again. I'll tell you again. You have a 65 uh, years old man with a VVIR pacemaker presents for a plant right hemicolectomy. Is the preoperative pacemaker check within 12 months of the scheduled surgery? Is this true or false or yes or no or I don't know? An ECG may provide useful information regarding the patient's dependency on the pacemaker. The rate response function of the pacemaker should be programmed off prior to surgery. Monopolar should be used in preference to bipolar. So please, you have the, uh, uh, the poll and I need your answers. Are you with me, Dr. Saad? Yeah, it's still building up. It's still building up, uh, Prof. Yeah. Yeah, we're waiting for you guys. Please um, shoot your answer. Uh, building up, still, still building up, Prof. 65 people answered from 169. Okay, I will get to this second uh, second uh, poll and because, because of the time. Okay, so do you mind if I read yeah. the uh, poll? Yeah, uh, the okay. first one very operative base maker check within 12 months. Uh, through uh, no, 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 I don't need, uh, I don't need okay. now the results. Okay, the results will be, yeah, we'll, yeah, okay, we'll, uh, yeah, and you see uh, the difference at the end of this, of the lecture. okay, lovely, okay? thank you. Okay, so this one was ready. A patient with a routine bowel surgery has a history of ventricular tachycardia with, with which an ICD was inserted two years previously. The day the device has been checked and the fibrillation function of the ICD deactive is deactivated prior to search. Okay, now, these external defibrillator beds should be at least 10 centimeters from the device. The arrhythmias, if it happens, should be treated following the ALS protocol. The energy output for the conventional defibrillator, the one I will use, external defibrillator, should be altered due to the presence of ICD. Is external pacing is contraindicated? The device will need to be checked at the CID. What does it mean, CID? CID is cardiac implantable electronic devices. This may be a permanent cardiac pacemaker or an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, ICD. Is there a pacemaker or ICD? The, if the pacemaker or the ICD is ventricular, it's called CRT, cardiac resynchronization therapy. We have three types, pacemaker, ICD, and CRT. Okay. The pacemaker is about 1 million patients per year worldwide now, 
and in nearly three, three millions in USA have, have pacemakers. A pacemaker is a, a device with a generator and leads either in, inserted in the endocardium, either in, either in one or two chambers. If it pass through the coronary sinus to the left, to the, to the right, to the left ventricle, it's called cardiac resynchronization therapy or biventricular device. We have to know why are, what is the problem? We have to know why the, this CIED, what is that? We have to know and what are the indications for its insertion? The anesthesiologist must know that very well. So for indications of the pacemaker, so simply you have to know that for symptomatic sinus bradycardic patient, it must be symptomatic or patient with third degree AV block. Third degree AV block or symptomatic sinus bradycardia, or if there is sick sinus syndrome or sick sinus node dysfunction. Those, these are the main, the main indication of pacemaker. The pacemaker in your mind, put it in mind, is for the bradycardia, symptomatic bradycardic patient and SA node dysfunction or uh, block. The SA node, the, the pacemaker, the lead of the pacemaker may be a unilat un 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 chamber, yeah, single chamber or dual chamber. In single chamber, for example, in the atrium, it will spike, it will, it, it will it pace the atrium, atrium, okay. It is in the ventricle to its pace before the QRS, the single chamber. The dual chamber, it can sense and pace post either atrium, the, the, before the B, or before the TRS. So it can sense and path both chambers. The anesthesiologist has Sorry, to bro. know. Your, your, yes. your screen is not shared properly. Huh? Your screen. Uh, what? Do you see it's your screen already? shared? Yeah, all the time. Are you, okay. Are you telling me now? Yeah. I think um, it's not shared. So the, oh, would you share your screen, please? I'll share that. Tell me, I, I shared already the croissant. Okay, yeah. I'll share the again. Yes, thank you. You didn't see before? Uh, no, it was not before, but um, I would be grateful to you if you come back with the other three slides, please. Okay. Yeah, just for Why do you? Okay, I see. As you said, that the indication of the pacemaker may be mainly for the symptomatic sinus bradycardic patient, for patient with third degree AV block or heart block, or patient with sinus node dysfunction. These are the main indications or the, for the pacemaker. You have to know why the device is indicated, why it is inserted, for what? For what. Because you will manage your patient according to the indications. Because you will see not the whole CIED is inserted for the same indications. So pacemaker for symptomatic bradycardic patient if maybe a single or chamber or dual chamber. Single chamber maybe in the atrium or in the ventricle at it will pace and and sense just before the B wave or QRS wave B in, in the atrium and the Q or, uh, QRS in the ventricular type. If it is dual chamber so it can sense and pace before the atrium or before the ventricle. So before the P or before the QRS. This is a physiological type. It can sense or pace both. Before, you have to know, you have to know what does it mean? What does it mean for you as an anesthesiologist? Because you will, you will, uh, now it is very common, very common in some countries, especially in some countries, that you face patients with CIED, okay? There are codings for the CIED, especially the base maker or the ICD. The base maker have five has five codes. You have to know these letters well. You have to know this way. The first one denoting the chamber paced. It's atrium, venous, uh, ventricle, or dual. The second letter denoting the chamber sensitive. It's atrium, ventricle, dual, or none. A response to sensing, either trigger, inhibition, dual, or none. What does it mean? If the ventricle, there's depolarization, it will sense 
ventricular depolarization, it will pace the ventricle. Okay. Either by inhibition, if it is okay, I will need no, no, no need for pacing. Okay, the pulse is okay. The, the, okay, no need for pacing. If not, it will sense pacing. And we'll, we will pace, we'll explain this in the next, next slide. The, the fourth one we have to know very well a rate modulation or rate adaption or uh, uh, rate modulation. This is very important. What did it, I will tell later on. And the mud side of the pacing. So you have five, five letters. Mostly we take four letters, the first four about the pacemaker. You have to know what does it mean. So this go tell us to the pacing modes. We take us to the pacing modes. We have two main modes. Synchronous mode and asynchronous mode. Synchronous mode, what does it mean? There, there, if there is intrinsic activity, intrinsic depolarization in the chamber, whatever the chamber, atrium or ventricle, pacing response will generate. If no intrinsic activity, there is pacing. If intrinsic activity is present, there is no pacing. Okay? So, but sometimes if it is pacing the atrium, if it can pace the atrium, if the AV conduct, if the, if the node is okay, if we know that there is no dysfunction, if the node is okay, you can sense and pace the atrium. If there is AV node block, we can sense the atrium or ventricle and pacing the ventricle, okay? This synchronous mode. Asynchronous mode is very important to have to know what asynchronous mode. Asynchronous mode means non-sensed pacing. What does it mean? The regardless of any intrinsic activity or any depolarization of the chamber, the base maker will give a preset number of shock to the a preset number of uh, pacing to the patient. So, if you look at this A zero zero. A is pacing atrium, zero, sensing. No sensing the atrium, non-sensing, but pacing the atrium with no activity. Non-sensing and pacing. So when you find A200, V00, Z00, it means a non-sensed pacing. Keep it in mind because it is very important later on. Asynchronous modes of pacemaker. We speak about the fourth one with the R. R what? what is R? R related to the rate responsive pacing. And in some pacemakers, sometimes the patient needs his heart rate to be increased due to physiological needs. So they sense, they put a sensor in the, for the minute ventilation or sensor for impedance, okay, an accelerator. And this will automatically increase the the base the heart the base the heart rate during times of increased physical exertion. So this physiological one, if the patient needs high tidal volume or sorry high uh, high heart rate, okay, it is okay. Cardiac output will increase because the patient is doing exercise or the patient is moving or the patient is in stress or whatever. This will increase the cardiac output. So this is our our. This is our letters I said before. The multi-site pacing one, we said if it is in biventricular, it's called multi-site ventricular. As we said before, multi uh, by the indications of the biventricular or the CRT or cardiac resynchronization therapy is different from the indication of the pacemaker itself. We said the pacemaker for bradycardia and a we know uh, 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 sinus uh, node uh, dysfunction or heart up, but here in this, there is this coronization of the activity between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. So the cardiac output is low, the fraction is low. This will, the CRT will resynchronize the activity of both ventricles, so they will increase the cardiac output, increase the ejection fraction. So it is indicated in patient with se severe heart failure or patient with uh, low ejection fraction or patient with cardiomyopathy. So the indications of CRT when you are seeing a patient or have a patient with CRT, keep in mind that this patient have a contractility disorders. 
discretion card card myopathy, low ejection fraction. See, patient with pacemaker keep in something else is the bradycardias, okay? What is the third one? The third one, the ICD, implantable cardioverter defibrillator. What is this? This cardioverter defibrillator. This is different. So if you look at here, there is coils here, coils in there. These coils will allow, will allow the, to be heated and allow for shock, shock, uh, for shock for what? Shock for defibrillation. The cell will sense the ventricular rate and it is programmed. If it is the upper limit of the, of the, the normal rate is, for example, X. If it is increased above this, it will sense it at tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia. And it start to give a very small preset number of rapid pulses to terminate the tachycardia, VTAC. If it is terminated, okay. If it is not, or the rate increased, it will sense it as ventricular fibrillation. That would give a shock wave, okay? The shock wave it gives is about 30, 35 joules, not like ours, the 30, 35 joules. Maybe less, like in this is 35 joules. Now new devices, new device up to 42 joules, okay? So the ICD, for mainly for patient with cardiomyopathy, same, uh, patient with VTAC or patient with VF. This is the indication of the uh, ACD, uh, ICD. So if a patient with ICD, I have to know the indications for the implantation. Patient for CRT, C C C I have to know what it was the indication for and implementing this device and patient with pacemaker have to know this. Very important, this point is very important. If this IC has to be act deactivated at a time, yes, it must be act deactivated in some situations. If any surgery with electrocautery, this device has to be deactivated. I have to stop the tachyarrhythmia because any movement, any movement, any electromagnetic interference will be sensed by the ICD as if it is in tachycardia or VF, and it will start to give the patient shocks, inappropriate shocks. And these shocks are painful. These shocks are inappropriate, no, no need for it. So whenever there is electromagnetic interference, I have, I have to deactivate this one. Also, if these are giving inappropriate shocks, some cases, these cardiological uh, uh, indications, I can also deactivate this one if I'm doing CPR, a patient with ICD, because sometimes I'm doing, and we'll discuss this later, I'm done doing CPR for that patient. He may got, the rescuer himself may find he's annoyed by the shocks itself. So I can uh, deactivate it. If I'm putting transcutaneous pacing, I have, if I put transcutaneous pacing, I have to stop the ICD. And at the end of life care, it has to be stopped. Otherwise, they will find all of the time they are giving shocks for the patient and for the dead body. So, one important item, what is magnet? Magnet application. Magnet is a very important item in to, to understand our uh, CIED. The magnet itself are putting a magnet on the generator of the uh, CID. So you have to know where the scar and have to feel this one and where this and this put your magnet on. If you put your magnet, usually, usually there's a magnet sensor in the CID. So this will send the magnet sensor and it will block the or it will affect the CID. But the Effect in CID is different from the pacemaker and ICD. This is a very important point, please. If it affects the pacemaker, if you put a magnet on a pacemaker, it will change the mode to asynchronous mode, as we said before. Asynchronous mode. What is asynchronous mode? Non-sensed pacing. Okay? 
nonsense. Regardless of these, regardless of the intrinsic activity, the patient, the the, the magnet will put the patient in a asyn asynchronous mode. This asynchronous mode may be of uh, of uh, of no of or maybe hazardous or maybe dangerous a little bit. Why? Because and also it depends on the life of the battery. Very important. If the life of the battery is less than three months, the 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 input from the live battery will be slow. If it is above three months, it with the battery life, it will be okay. This pacing, not the normal pacing. Usually the normal pacing of the pacemaker, 60, 65, 70. This is a normal range. And some some pacemakers have what's called night uh, pacing. Night pacing, the patient is by this, uh, it is uh, uh, interrogated by the CID team or cardiology team. You know that the patient at the at the end of his sleep, he's sleeping, for example, at 8, 9, 10 p.m. So they reduce the rate a little bit. This is programmed. So while are you putting uh, a piece Maker, uh, a magnet on the base maker, it will not give you 60 as before. No, it will give you from 70 to 100. From 70 to 100. But if the battery life is low, it will not give you this high or this uh, needed uh, uh, heart rate, which may be interfered physiologically with the patient in the, during surgery or during what. So, number two, the application of the magnet is not predictable. You cannot apply a magnet for each pacemaker and give you the same results. So before you are dealing with a patient at any time, with a, you have a magnet, so you have any before operation, enter whatever. If you don't have CID team, you have to put the magnet on the patient itself, himself, and see the effect. If the effect is OK, so you know this is OK, OK, go on. If it is not okay, keep in mind you have to prepare external pacemaker. I hope this point is clear for you. So a pacemaker, when it is applied to uh, a, a magnet applied to the pacemaker, it will shift it to a synchronous mode, as we mentioned before. The effect on the ICD is different. A very important point. On the ICD, the magnet will do what? Will disable the tachyarrhythmia. So the no tachyarrhythmia detection, okay, it's good, but they have no effect on the pacemaker function of the CID of the ICD. Keep in mind, all now the the new generations of the CID or whatever ICD, it is ICD plus pacemaker. CRT is a CRT ICD plus pacemaker. Okay, pacemaker alone something else like an ICD or CRT is usually have pacemaker. So. For ICD, it disables the tachyarrhythmias, but it will not affect the pacemaker. So if you need to deactivate the pacemaker of the patient with, CI, uh, with ICD, you have to put external pacemaker. Okay? I hope this is okay. As we said, the effective mag is variable, and always check pre-operative how is the, the uh, because uh, this magnet effect depends on the type of the base maker. Not every base maker has, as I said, magnet sensor. Not every better, every every base maker responds in the same way. Now, now to come to our main issue: the perioperative management of patient with CID. What to do? Abraxa Advisory from Heart Society, uh, Heart, Heart Rhythm Society, and the ASA Society in, in 2011 make a, a very good consensus about that. And it is renewed more and more, but it comes, you have to ask the patient, there are four questions you have to find the answer before you start with your patient. Number one, what is the type of the device and what is the program mode? So you have to know the type of the device, either from the patient himself, they have a patient who came with their card or whatever, you have a manufacturer card or you have to contact his cardiologist or something like that. But sometimes you don't have this, so you don't have this. So you need to know the device, uh, what was the program, and, and so you know what is always the indication. As I said, you have to know the indications, okay? 
up. Number two, you have to ask the patient, what was the last time he was interrogated in his device? Within one month of the pacemaker, okay, it is interrogated well, and the battery life is okay, it is, everything is okay. But this time is low in with ICD and CR, uh, CRT. For them, six months and below is time. So 12 months for the pacemaker, but six months and low for the ICD and CRT. Otherwise, you need to search for a cardiologist by any way to, to tell you what is the because. If this machine, you don't know if this functioning well or not. You don't know. You will meet the patient, I will get the patient to, to surgery and that, and that, and you know this machine will work properly, you don't know. Okay? If you don't have this, if you have everything, okay, but you have to do chest x-ray. Very, very important to the chest x-ray. Because chest x-ray, we'll see what it will tell you. Look here, I'm trying to compare. Look for this one on the right side. As a homogeneous, homogeneous leads in the atrium and ventricle. So this is a pacemaker. Okay, this is a pacemaker. You can see now this is a pacemaker from the just X-ray. What about that one? No, it is. Can I see a coiled? A coiled. Can you see with me the coiled, enforced co lead with this and one and that? So this is ICD because this coil will give the shock to a CIC, ICD. What is the third one? Look at this. There is one lead here and one here and the left right ventricle and another one due to coronary sinus to the right ventricle. So this patient is CRT. So from the X-ray itself, from the X-ray itself, you can see, you can know what is the type of the CID. Because according to this, you have to know what was the indication. For the pacemaker, no, it is a bradycardia and I pluck. For ICD, it is tachy, ventricular tachy, or VF, or myocardial contractility and uh, myopathy. For ICD, biventricular, so CRT, biventricular, so it's also cardiomyopathy. You have to manage this patient as a cardiomyopathy patient, this patient as VTAC patient, or, and that patient as bradycardic side, um, symptomatic bradycardic patient. The first question, as we answered about, look for the second question. If the device is functioning properly or not. You don't know. If you have a team cardiology or something, okay, you, 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 he will see the device, will tell you the device is functioning properly or not. But if the patient didn't see the, the, his cardiology long time, he doesn't know where, he doesn't have any papers or anything, so you have to know by yourself at least. Because now, this is very important for the anesthesiologist. You have to do that because not all the time you will find, you find cardiologists. Not all the time you find uh, someone uh, to tell you what is going on. So now it's going on. You have the anesthetist has to, to build his practice and expense in such field. It's very important. So the second one is advice function probable or not. Put the patient, put the patient on the bradycard. If the, it's working well, so it will, uh, it will pace him. How to put the patient in the bradycardia? For example, if you do carotid massage or valsalva, if the, if the pacemaker is functioning well, it will increase the heart rate because the, there is low, low, our bradycardia, so the, the heart rate functions well. Third, which is a very important point, very, very important point, and this point is ab upon which everything is the management of dealing with the patient depends on. You have to know. Is the patient, is a pacemaker dependent or not? What is meant by what pacemaker dependent? Pacemaker dependent means that the patient cannot sustain his life without this pacing of the pacemaker. He has no perfusion. He has, doesn't have perfusion to sustain his life without this pacemaker. You have absence of life sustaining rhythm without pacing system or absence of perfusing rhythm without pacing. So pacing a patient is, okay, depending mainly on the pacemaker. How do I know this? Which patient said this? Patient, if the patient has a history of symptomatic bradycardia, he got syncope before or whatever, so this is patient bradycardia. If the, 
if the, I put the patient on VVI pacing mode, VVI means what? It senses the ventricle and paces the ventricle by inhibition. The ventricle it will not pace if there is good or good number of ventricular uh, intrinsic depolarization, he will not pace them. I put the patient with the low BV, VVI pacing. If, the, if it is activated or no, or no evidence, there is no spontaneous ventricular activity. The ventricle itself, I put it to the lower pacemaker, the lower level, but the, there is no spontaneous ventricular activity. So this means that the patient depending mainly on the pacemaker. Number three, which is very important, practically, you find the pacemaker spikes in front of most or all of the P waves or Q waves. It depends on, is it atrial or ventricular, as I said before. You'll find a pacemaker with each or most of the waves. So this patient, keep in mind, this patient is a pacemaker dependent. The fourth question which you are telling about, what is the probability of electromagnetic interference and how to minimize the risk? As you see in the OR, a lot of electromagnetic interferences, and this electromagnetic interference is the NR enemy for the CIED. Every effort is, is done to, to minimize this. Fortunately, this, the new generations of the CIEDs, the new generation reduces very the sensation of the electromagnetic interference on the or effect of electromagnetic interference on the, pace, on the CID as much as, but still it happens. It, still you have patients with old CIEDs, still not all the uh, CIEDs can offer this uh, privilege. So a lot of things can uh, give you elect or create electromagnetic interference. For example, mainly the electrocautery, electrocautery in the, in the eyes. Also, okay. But also in the in the in this in the, in the perioperative settings, as I said, electrocautery, not only electrocautery, any nervous stimulation, nervous stimulator for the local, external defibrillation, you are putting external defibrillator for a patient, different from patient has pacemaker or a CIED and doing external defibrillation, or patient doing magnetic MRI or ACT electroconvulsive therapy, radio frequency ablation, extracorporeal check wave therapy. These are situations in the OR you may be of high electromagnetic interference that may affect the function of the CED. Uh, so anything and see the rate, yes, shivering, fasciculations, large dilar volumes. Shivering, it, the myopotentials of shivering and this and also in fasciculation, this will be sensed by the pacemaker or by the ICD. For the ICD, it will be sensed as tachycardia or as VF and it will be in a proper shock for no reasons, which is very, as I said, very harmful to the patient and very painful to the patient. If a patient is pacemaker dependent, the pacemaker dependent, it will sense this activity as R waves, as contraction. So it will not pace the heart, it will not pace the, pace the patient. So the patient may go to a systole or something like that, and they don't know that because it's the pacemaker itself senses that, sense the, this, uh, fasciculation or shivering as uh, R wave, for example, or QRS or something like so, it will not pace the heart. So it may be severe hypotension or cardiac arrest or asystole for that patient. So electromagnetic interference is very critical. So how the electromagnetic interference affects CIED? Pacemaker malfunction. What's oversensing? As I said before, oversensing means that the whatever this or the CID will sense, for example, ICD will sense, okay, there is activity, it will not, it will give, as I said before, in a proper shock. And the pacemaker will sense uh, there is activity, okay, no need for pacing. So the patient may become hypovolic uh, asystole and you don't know that, okay? Or inhibition of the pacing, inhibition of the pacing, or what's called under sensing, it doesn't, no need for that. It may turn to asynchronous pacing, it may change this normal, the patient physiologically is, is adapted for a rate, and there is no interrogative since long time, they adapted for a physiologically with the, with the interrogation of the CID team, the, every, every three months or six months, they change the settings to another level according to the physiological needs of the patient. Now it will bring him back to a synchronous mode, which may not be suitable for him. Or reset him to back up mode, from the, the backup mode from the start, which is not absolute. 
not fit for him at all. So all these are things can happen. Also, it can give, in, as I said, in the ICD, in an appropriate inhibition of tachyar therapy. It also, this may, may affect the damage, it may damage the generator or the, all of the uh, leads itself. It may also burn the myocard. So, who are the patients at high risk of, form of electromagnetic interference? What do you think? You have to know this very well. You are. Pacemaker dependent patient, who, and we mentioned because, the, for example, a complete AV block may become a systole or bradycardia from electromagnetic interference. Patient with ICD because the antiarrhythmia function is suspended and the pacemaker with rate responsive function. The rate responsive function we mentioned before, the R later before uh, triggered, which by mechanical ventilation and the patient the, by increasing mechanical ventilation. There is sensor increase mechanical ventilation or increase the heart rate to increase the cardiac output to face this to, to face this increase in the uh, need for the cardiac. All this you have to disable. You have to give a high risk patient with electromagnetic interference. You have to put these three patients under your eye because you can. Anyhow, so pre-operative silo. After all, what you said. You have to think if the electromagnetic interference is likely to occur during the planned procedure or not. Very important question. There is electromagnetic interference or not. So, if Dr. so, Muhammad, what our, our time? Yes. Our time. So, do we still have uh, yeah. any to go? Yeah, yeah. How long I have? I have uh, we now we're 35 minutes. We yeah, can, 35 to... minutes. We can give you three more minutes. Yeah. Okay, so a pacemaker, you will, will uh, you have to put a pacemaker in a synchronous mode. Either you are doing by magnet or by program. If in a patient above umbilicus, above elbow, you have to put magnet or for the pacemaker. If below umbilicus, below elbow, don't be uh, afraid. You, uh, you can keep the magnet available for you. The ICD, you have to put, you have to suspend the antiarrhythmia and the asynchronous mode. You have to uh, the pacemaker and the I think current small. It has to, to, and all the patients must have external defibrillator and pacemaker outside, and continuous ECG monitoring is mandatory. ECG alone is not enough. You have to do peripheral pulse, peripheral pulse uh, monitoring. Very important because I said before, you may the spikes may be seen by the event, counted by the monitor as if it is high, seventy, of, and the patient is as told. So you have to do peripheral monitoring of that. This is a standard. So if you are using electrocautery, so if you have an alternative bipolar or can you have used, if not use the pacemaker, the, uh, the cautery away from the pacemaker, but less than more than 15 seconds and give it short and interrupted, short and interrupted, very important short and, inter and interrupted. In MRI, you have to do uh, what's called the MRI mode uh, ventilator, and this is now available. For electroconvulsive therapy, also have to do this, disable the, as I said before, extra corporal which equivalent, as I said before. Take your anthetic drugs, we said this, avoid hyperventilation, take care of succinyl choline because succinyl choline has said fasciculation and this and that. The protocol for resuscitation, if you resuscitate the patient, take care of the risk where it was a CIED patient, uh, ICD patient may feel, may be annoyed by the shocks, so you have to deactivate that. And you have to give the shock External shock as protocoled by the ALS. Your, if you need emergent fibrillation or cardioversion, put the anterior posterior position, not away, keep away from the generator, otherwise it will be damaged. During central venous catheterization, take care because the wire, the, the guide wire, the guide wire may, may deactivate the, uh, the uh, wire of the ICD or may activate this RCT wire going to the left, to the to right ventricle and dislodge it. Very important to try to use femoral vein or heart. Now, summarize, I have a pacemaker, look for the electromagnetic interference. Is a patient pacemaker dependent? Yes or no? If no, not, no programming necessary, but keep the magnet available. If yes, look for the electromagnetic interference. The space, the distance, this is 15, it's okay, you have to, program to asynchronous mode. If ICD, you have to deactivate the ICD patient and look for the pacemaker with the ICD. 
not, not dependent, so no programming. Yes, dependent, look for the distance. If small distance, you have to program. If no, no long distance, you have to bring by any way the consultant to program. If you have emergency situation, something else, I don't know. Anyhow, post operating, you have to monitor the patient and immediately everything to be resuscitation ready and call for interrogation by the now back to our poll again, Dr. Saad, I think I have to tell them again, and I, I wait for the results even after a few minutes, no problem. And this is the same, the same, yeah, our same uh, poll, let's see what is the difference between the pre-lecture and post-lecture, okay? Thank you very much for this. I hope to and find you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad, for this important okay. lecture about this uh, very... Please consider the ball now, guys, please. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we will give a, a, a couple of minutes for the attendees yeah. to fill the poll. Uh, there are a couple of questions. If they are during the... You can answer the questions, please. So, uh, one of the questions... Um, uh, how will a pacemaker sense the physical activity rate response? But I think you answered this. It's according to the respiration. Yeah. Yes. Uh, is it a rule to check the magnet effect on the ICD? Is it a must to check? 